Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Gizmo Joe. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a controller by Nyko, uh, specifically the Mini Wireless Core controller. Now, what's interesting about this guy is that basically it's advertised for the Switch, but you can also use it with a PC or an Android device. So it gives it a little bit of extra functionality. But the real reason why somebody might pick this up is because it's mini, and it is mini. Um, I'm not the tallest guy in the world. I don't think I have giant hands, but this controller certainly makes my hands look huge. So as you can see, it's pretty small. Um, I'm going to take it out of the packaging and uh, you can get a real feel for how big it is. But this could be really good for somebody with smaller hands, specifically children or just really anybody who is looking for a smaller controller. Now, obviously, uh, we've got our dual analog, our D-pad. Uh, we've got our face buttons. We've got shoulder buttons, all that sort of stuff. Kind of reminds me of an Xbox controller with the offset uh, analog sticks. But like I said, they uh, advertise it specifically for the Nintendo Switch. Now, I don't know if that's because it's really small. So, you know, maybe Nintendo Switch, you know, is aimed at smaller children. I, I don't really know. But basically, what's really cool about this is that, like I said you, before, you can use it on a PC and an Android device. So if we're just looking at the packaging itself, there's nothing really all that special about it. It's a controller, whatever. Um, and it says here it's a wireless controller with turbo functionality. All right. It's got charge and play cable included. Da 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 da. If we look over on the side, there's nothing much. Obviously, it connects via Bluetooth, etc. etc. If we look on the back here, it says here Bluetooth wireless. So that's good. Turbo function. So it's programmable turbo for any of the face or shoulder buttons. So that could be handy for some. Uh, and it is charges by a USB type C, which is good. And it's got a rechargeable battery inside. Doesn't tell us how big the battery is, but uh, it tells us that it's about 20 hours of playtime. Obviously, most of these places tend to exaggerate that but you know that's still pretty good on the bottom here we've got nothing but just some uh you know basic information what i'm going to do is i'm going to open this guy up we're going to take a look inside the packaging see if there's instructions whatever and we're actually going to take a look at the controller itself so just bear with me i'll be right back okay so i've sliced open the back with a knife and we're going to open up this package let's take a look all right, so I'm going to take the box. I'm just going to set it off to the side. And let's see here. So what do we have? So we've got a USB-C charging cable. Um, it's nothing special. I'm not sure how long this is. It looks pretty long. Uh, let's undo this twist tie and see if we can get an idea. Uh, I'd probably say it's about six feet, I would think. Uh, maybe about two meters or so. And uh, obviously, you just got your standard USB-A here and then your USB-C. So it actually charges via USB-C, which is nice. Could always use some extra USB-C cables around. If we take a look at the little instructions that come with it, I'm not going to read all this aloud, but uh, we've got English and a bunch of other uh, things. It says here, getting started. And basically, it says you got to charge it. I'm sure there's a little bit of a charge in there anyway. And then wireless no mode, turn on the switch console. Go into the home screen, blah, 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 blah. So there's uh, really no instructions as to how to connect this via PC and Android. And that's really interesting because when I was looking at this, I was reading some of the reviews on Amazon. And people said, you know, even though it says it will work with a PC and Android, some people could not get it to work. Other people were like, what you got to do is um, normally, excuse me, uh, normally what happens is uh, in the instructions there, it tells you to essentially hit the home button, which uh, is, I think this button, oh no, sorry, this button here, the home button and Y to pair uh, this controller to your Nintendo Switch. But what you wanna do is you wanna hit the home button and the A button at the same time in order to pair it to a PC or Android device. So just keep that in mind if you're buying this for a PC or an Android. It doesn't actually say it in the instructions how to do that, but you can actually pair it. now. Here's the controller itself. Like I said before, my hands look, you know, dwarf this thing, but it's actually really comfy. Um, I actually don't mind this. The face buttons are a little small. So I feel like, you know, with the size of my thumbs, I might accidentally hit a button I don't actually mean to hit. Uh, but, you know, all the buttons feel really responsive. We've got our shoulder buttons back here, obviously the charging port. Uh, it looks like these buttons are your, your programmable turbos. Uh, we've got a home button or dual analog sticks. Yeah, reminds me of an Xbox controller. 
uh, with the offset joysticks. I actually prefer that compared to the uh, PlayStation style where the joysticks are down at the bottom. Uh, but that's, um, you know, personal preference. Anyway, let's for size comparison, let's take a look at a DualShock 4. So this is a PlayStation 4 controller. Um, it is significantly bigger than this thing. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, obviously made for people with much smaller hands. Um, I feel like it's very ergonomic, though. Like, it fits in my hands very well, even though my hands kind of dwarf it. And I feel like over time, I would get, you know, fairly comfortable with this. So, yeah, so I don't really have an issue with that. I think uh, I'm really actually pleased with the way that this feels in my hands, even though it's so small. Um, it's all plastic, by the way. There's no metal or anything on here, uh, which is typical. I mean, like, look, the price point on this is about 25 bucks. Um, I'll leave a link down in the description so you can pick one up if you're interested. But, uh, you know, for $25, the fact that it works with a Switch, it works with PC, works with your phone, um, that's pretty good. Um, and if you're looking for something for, you know, maybe a smaller kid or just somebody with smaller hands, uh, this will definitely do the trick. Um, you know, especially when you consider that a Switch Pro controller and stuff is, is pretty expensive. Um, you know, 25 bucks is a great price point for, for something like this. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pair it up to uh, my phone and see if we can get it working. Okay, so um, I've got my Amazon Fire HD 8 Plus tablet, and I've got some emulators uh, hooked up on it. Uh, one of the things I do want to mention with the Nyko uh, little controller here is that on the back, when you look at it, it says getting started, press home button and Y to start pairing. So the home button is this guy right here, and then Y is right here. So you'd hold these two down simultaneously, and you'd see the little LEDs down here start to blink. That's all well and good if you want to pair it to your Nintendo Switch or your PC. But if you want to pair it to an Android device, you really need to hit Home and A. Now, it is uh, buried in those little instructions somewhere, but I just figured I'd let you guys know. So it's Home and A. So A for Android, easy way to remember. But so, you know, if you try to hit Home and Y, your Android device is not going to see this thing. And you're going to say to yourself, why the heck doesn't this work? So it's Home and A to pair to an Android device. So I'm going to do that right now, and then we're going to fire up some emulators and see how this little guy performs. Okay, guys, so as you can see, uh, the little red LED indicator is solid, which means that it is paired to my my uh, Android tablet, you notice the little Bluetooth icon up in the corner here indicating that it's paired. Now I've got three emulators here. I've got uh, PPSSPP, which is a Sony PlayStation Portable emulator. I've got uh, Game Boy Advance, and I've got SNES. Now we should have no issues playing uh, the Game Boy Advance or the um, Super Nintendo games. Let's just have a look. Let's take a look. Uh, let's see here. Let's do open content. Oops, I hit back by accident. Sorry. So we're gonna hit open content. Let's try. Um, uh, let's try some Donkey Kong Country. Now I will mention uh, during all of these. Uh, Emulators, I do have the volume turned off. I don't want the um, video to get essentially flagged for copyright infringement. So just uh, be aware that um, I am not uh, having the sound on just to kind of save my own um, butt, I suppose. Anyway, um, like I said, this is sort of advertised as a Nintendo Switch kind of alternative to the Pro Controller, and, I mean, it's way cheaper, so um, I would highly recommend doing that. Now, obviously, what you'll notice is that the buttons are not mapped correctly, so that's my fault. Um, you know, obviously, uh, I haven't had a chance to get into the emulator settings and change the buttons up, but it's pretty easy. And as you can see, performance is excellent, and there's really no lag with the controller. I'm having, you know, an easy time uh, with the D-pad. The analog stick also works in order to move my character around. So, it does a pretty decent job. Let's check out some other things. So here we've got Castlevania. Uh, this is one of my favorites uh, for the Game Boy Advance. And again, as you can see, it is, uh, this controller is performing really well. There's really no lag, um, no issues whatsoever. Again, I'm using the D-pad, but you could use the analog stick if you prefer. Um, I prefer the D-pad on these older games. And 
and it works quite well. What I want to do is try to test the limits a little bit on this particular uh, device and we'll go to check out some PP SSPP um, and see how we go with it. Okay, so this is uh, Sony PSP and we're playing some Burnout and I'm using both, trying both the D-pad and the analog stick and again, performance is good, response on the controller is excellent um, and obviously I'm not doing too well, but um, everything was mapped sort of out of the box, no problems whatsoever uh, with PPS or PPSSPP, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, everything works really smoothly. Uh, it's really good. Let's check out some other games. Okay, so we've got Virtua Tennis here. This is again for the PSP. Um, obviously, the Australian Open was recently, and uh, it was amazing. Uh, if you guys watch tennis, let me know. Uh, I'm a big fan. Bit, bit disappointed that Federer wasn't there, but I know he's getting up there in age, but uh, happy for Nadal. Uh, but obviously, the controller's working really well. I'm, I just really suck, so um, bear with me. There we go. Score a point. All right, let's check out some other... Okay, so we've got one of our favorites here. One of my favorites. It's Metal Slug XX for PSP. And uh, again, the controller is excellent. I'm a bit partial to the D-pad, especially on a lot of these 2D sort of games. Um, but again, the analog stick works just fine as well. So having an excellent time with this. <laughs> um, I might end up just actually playing this for a few hours after I hit the stop button. But um, yeah, the Nyko little co mini controller here works really well. And it feels really good in the hands as well. Um, I don't have the largest of hands, but I also don't have super small hands either. And I have to admit that, you know, the the sort of design of it feels really good. So um, yeah, so the Nyko mini controller is designed as a sort of Nintendo Switch Pro controller alternative. It's obviously a heck of a lot cheaper. It's only about 25 bucks compared to I think 60 for the Pro controller for the Switch. I don't have a Switch, so I haven't been able to test uh, this particular controller with it. But Amazon reviews seem to um, suggest that it works just fine. People really love this thing. Obviously, if you have a smaller child or anybody just with smaller hands, this is an excellent little controller. It's fairly light as well, um, but it doesn't feel cheap. Um, it feels fairly well built. Obviously, it's all plastic, but um, you know it, it does have a decent sort of build quality to it. It doesn't creak or anything like that. The buttons all feel really good. Um, the D-pad feels a bit squishy for my taste, but it does work really well. And again, it's got that sort of Xbox One um, sort of control layout with the offset analog sticks, which I really prefer. But anyway, I, I can't recommend this enough, uh, especially if you're looking for something that kind of works with everything. Um, it works with Android devices, it works with your PC via Bluetooth, um, it just works really, really well. So I'll leave a link down in the description for you to pick one of these up. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching. Hit that like button. If you have any uh, comments or questions, hit me up in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe, it really helps me out. Anyway, this is Gizmo Joe signing off.